Hey, what is going on guys? Welcome back to White Gaming. How is everybody doing? So we are back again today with some more Generation Zero. And the plan today is simple. I am going to go over my advice for taking out the Reaper. Now this guy, he's big, he's bad, and he's a beast. But he ain't all that bad. He's not difficult. If you know what you're doing, you know where to hit him, and you know when to run and hide like a little girl, then it's, it's actually quite easy. But not, I don't want to say easy, because it, it's not easy. But it makes things much easier to deal with. So, I'm going to go over a few little points. I mean, this guy, obviously, is that much of a beast that you have a bloody warning the first time you have to fight him. And his signature weapon, the Thermobaric Blast, is absolutely insane. It, it's like a nuclear warhead. Uh, but, mm, it, he's mad. He's insane. He's so much fun to take on. For the work you have to put in, the loot he gives, worth it, 100%. I've pit, I've killed five of these guys now, I think, and not a single bad drop. Not one. Everything I've had has been really good, so not going to complain at that at all. Uh, the one key thing to, to take note of is where you need to hit, what you need to hit, and in an order. You can't just shoot the crap out of this guy. It's going to take you a very long time and you're probably going to waste a lot of ammo and die. So, I'll just go over a few of the points now and then we will take him on. So, let's take a look at the components quick before we head in and uh, destroy this guy. Now, as you can see here, he's got the sort of energy coils on his joints. Now, on his right knee and right shoulder, they are there. And same with his left knee and left shoulder. Now, these you want to hit first. Don't focus on anything else first, because whilst he uses these, so when they're flashing red like that, they're the easiest to see, and whilst they are flashing, he doesn't take damage. So when they stop flashing and he isn't sort of got a red tint to him, then that is when you want to take your shots. If he's red, he won't take damage. He's too beastie, and uh, he will mess you up, and you will waste your ammo. So... Get rid of these four coils first, and then go in. Once you've got rid of the four coils, next thing I would recommend is obviously his weapon. He's got the same weapons as normal. He has got the um, the machine gun underneath and the rocket pods with the eight rockets that you can fire. Pretty much the same setup as a tank. Big difference is rapid goddamn fire. This guy is fast. He will not stop and... It's relentless. You can see when he's ready to attack because he will flash red as he is there, red. His weapons will also have a little bit of red lightning going around them. So that is with his shields up. And as you can see, this sort of red flicker here, this will come on to his weapons when he's ready to use them. That is the same with him as himself when he's about to do his thermobaric attack. It will go slightly red. Um, if you're watching him, you'll notice and pick up on these little key things which gives you a nice chance to sort of move away. So he's also got the tick tank, the usual stuff on the back, tick tank and a gas chamber, not gas, sorry, um, explosive pack. It's also worth noting, I'm not too sure if it's a bug or not, but I've tried several occasions to EMP these guys. Now I've used the large packs that you can place, I've used the medium throwable ones and the small throwable ones, and also the rocket propelled ones. And from what I can see, this guy will not be stunned by EMPs. Um, I've done it with a shield on, with a shield off, and hasn't worked. I've done it once I've destroyed a shield, hasn't worked. So I think he's immune to EMPs. He is not immune, however, to flares, fireworks, and sticky flares. They still work. They don't work as well as what they do on other machines. So he, it draws his attention for a couple of seconds but that is probably at most it, it doesn't really help you out all too much i mean it works just to get you out of the way and into cover for a minute so you know you can try it but i personally i wouldn't really use the flares the emps or anything like that. save them to level up your areas and uh, just make things a little bit easier on uh, on the inventory and as you can see another one from the front without his shields that is his normal weapons the usual weak point supply as well say the knees the joints and the circles on top of the head and it's just general face area this bit with these bars on 
I wouldn't really go for that too much. I'd more aim for the specific weak points because you'll get him down a lot faster and you will save yourself a lot of ammo. Right. Let's jump in. Let's face the Reaper. Let's have some fun. Let's do it. So, first things first, when you're fighting this guy, you've got to be really careful with your location. You do not want to be out in the open. You will not win if you're in the open. You need to be somewhere with buildings or just with some form of cover. Because later on down the line, when he gets a little bit more angry, the damage that he does is um, is, is pretty beefy. But we'll, we'll get to that a bit later. <clears throat> First thing you'll notice about him is the red glowing on his knee joints and his shoulder joints. Now what they are, are shield generators. So whilst he's got that red glow, he will not take damage. So you have to be really careful with that. Don't waste your ammo and shoot him whilst he's got the red glow on, because he will pretty much annihilate you. Uh, what you want to do is wait for those uh, those charges to sort of stop. Now there's four, joint, four points, one on the left knee, one on the right knee, and one on the left shoulder, one on the right shoulder. Now, when uh, those have stopped, he's like any normal machine. He can take damage, and he will go down. What you need to do is take out those four key components. That's the first thing you want to do before you even attempt anything else, because otherwise you're just wasting ammo fanning around. There we go. There we go, he's dropped him again. The best, if you, if you keep enough distance from him, um, he likes to sometimes turn left and right, and then that gives you a nice vantage on, on those, uh, those key points there. Once you're close to him, obviously that makes it a bit harder. I'm quite lucky at the moment, because we've got some decent cover between me and him, which is good. Oh! Those cannons that he has are really powerful. The way they just plow into you is absolutely insane. Right, let's um, wait for him to stop charging and then we will take down these uh, little generators that he's got. With regards to the backside of him, all the same. He has got the same as a normal tank. Uh, ah, he's done it again. He's got the fuel cell and the tick tank. And then underneath, he's got his machine guns and his launcher variants. I think he's only got the um, the normal launcher like a tank has got. And the rate of fire is much, much faster though. And accuracy-wise, he he's alright. If you're standing still, just keep moving really from this guy. And uh, he doesn't like it all too much. Right, so what we'll do is uh, get these destroyed, and then we will uh, go from there. So as you can see there, that gas cloud is part of his thermobaric blast. Now that thing is an absolute beast. It is one hit kill. You need to get behind cover as soon as he uh, deploys that gas. It needs to be hard cover as well. You cannot get behind a car or some shitty piece of wood. You need to be behind a building. As many layers of concrete you can get behind, make sure you do that. 
which is, like I said at the beginning, the main reason you can't fight him um, out in the open because he's just too, he's too beefy when he gets down to his later stages. Now he starts to use that thermite blast towards the end of his life when he's uh, a little bit tired. He's had enough. Now we're still going to get rid of these uh, shield generators. Come on, big boy. Regards to flares and EMP devices, you can use flares. The flares still attract him. They just do not work as uh, as long as they would on a normal tank. Uh, as soon as you start shooting him once, that's it. He's back on you. You've got to bear that in mind. Right, that is his e um, shield device is gone. So, now he's pretty open. What you can do is throw this. Medium-sized EMP cell. But, EMPs don't work on him. So, uh, you've got to bear that in mind. EMPs are pretty useless against him. Flares, they work slightly. Fireworks still work a little bit. And uh, sticky flares, well, that's obviously if you've got a bunch of enemies around you. He started out his horn, then he'll shoot the gas out. And then when the, whilst the gas is out, that's when you need to get behind cover. You've got around five, I think it's five to ten seconds to get behind cover whilst he's shooting the gas. And here we go. Now, he will also call in six Phoenix um, runners. Not six, sorry, five Phoenix runners when he starts to deploy the gas. Now, when his health is getting lower, he'll deploy the gas and the thermobaric blast more and more often. So you do have to bear that in mind. The good thing about that is he can kill his own machines. So that makes it a little bit easier on you. If he uses that blast, he will take out all the runners that aren't behind hardcover like you are. Which is uh, it's actually quite nice that he does that. He sort of helps you. He shoots you in the foot and then helps you out. Right, he's almost got his machine gun down. His blast and his machine gun are definitely the, the most vital, but the, the most damaging weapons. Uh, I don't find the rockets too difficult. They're fine. If you can get rid of his machine gun early on, that's perfect. Because he's so quick with it. Which is where the flares really come in handy. As you can see there as well, the little red lightning bolts that come up. That means he's charging his weapon and he's about to use it. So, he does give you some slight warnings. There are little cues to when he's about to attack. Oh, he's gone red. And he's deploying gas. Hard cover. The first time he did that, I absolutely crapped my pants. It is an absolutely brutal attack. But he's a brutal machine. That's what he's here for. He is here to destroy everything. This is an end game boss. Oh, gosh. What are you doing here? Stay away, boys. Let's try and poke out and get rid of his machine gun. Other than his kneecaps, the weak points are pretty much the same as any other tank. Which is quite good. As you can see, he's got purple gas, which is his normal poisonous gas. The green gas is the gas you need to hide from. Purple is fine, green is not good. Where is he? Where is he? Where is he? What are you doing, son? Let's see if we can get him out of here again. Why am I getting it? Oh, the gas. The gas is the one thing that always gets me with him. I always forget that it's there. It's it's like the um the apocalypse harvester gas. There's a slight delay in the damage and the um the actual gas cloud so you can run through it at first I don't know if that was a bug or not right that is his machine gun down so now we'll work on his rocket pods
Getting close to him is doable. But I wouldn't recommend it unless you've got hard cover close to him as well. Obviously for those gas clouds. So... There we go, he's launching it now. If you've got a good headset, you can hear the sort of whirring as it's charging up just before he drops the gas. And then that gets louder and louder the closer it gets to actually dropping you. So it's good to listen out to that. He does give off a lot of cues to when he's about to do attacks. So it does really help you out. If you start to focus on him and just watch him a little bit before you actually take him on, then you'll realise what he's doing and what, what you need to keep an eye on. And it, it doesn't make it easy, not by a long shot, but it helps. It helps a lot. Oh, and he got me. Cheeky bugger. That is what we have that there, ladies and gentlemen. And swing round, there it is. Right, that's both of his weapons out of the way. So now, only thing that he's got left is his fuel tank. Obviously, same as normal tanks, kneecaps, things like that are all um, all the usual suspects. They work really well, but the two weapons, the tick tank, the fuel tank, always the big boys. Best thing to go for. Now his weapons are gone. He's going to start getting angry. When you get to this stage, once he starts to really start hurting, say down to 10-15% health, he will start using that thermobaric blast on a loop, which can get really dicey. And he can kill himself with that as well, so try not to let him kill himself. Because it just doesn't look and feel as cool. The first one I took on, he blew himself up. And uh, I was very upset. Nice. Right, that's his tank down. And that is him down. That, see, nice and easy. Two deaths, two experimentals, an FAO exosuit jacket. This guy is the dog's bollocks when it comes to loot. He has got it all. He's absolutely amazing. He is worth taking down. And uh, there you have it, guys. My quick, easy tips on taking down the Reaper. That wasn't too difficult. Haha, -ha, we got him. So, thanks for watching, guys. I hope you've enjoyed. And we'll be back again very soon with some more Generation Zero. Peace.